interesting web page. It says here that you're going to use the following code snippet, and this is the, the code that we're going to be kind of looking at a little bit. And you can follow along with the instructor to create a web page in the Notepad program or Notepad++ or again, Text Wrangler for Mac. And again, last week we went through um, some of the options that, um, that if you're a Mac user, what you have available to you um, for that. Uh, for PC users, I would recommend Notepad++. It's a free download and um, it works really well. I mean, you can do this in Notepad, the regular Notepad and it'll work, but Notepad++ has some cool features where it like, you know, changes the color of the tags and um, so that you know, you know, kind of if it's organized properly or not, or, you know, what, what have you. Um, so I would check that out. Um, when we're working on a web page, we're going to be working with uh, different programs at the same time. And that can be a little bit, you know, kind of confusing at first um, because we're going to have a text editor open, but we're also going to have a browser open. The text editor is going to allow us to make changes to our HTML language. And then we can preview those changes in a web browser. Okay. What do I mean by a web browser is going to be something like Internet Explorer or what they call, um, what are they called? Microsoft's Edge browser or Firefox or Chrome, you know, what, what have you. That's a browser and your text editor. So um, let's take a look at some of the code. It says, um, Create your own web page by altering the HTML code snippet. Um, you can do that and alter it. You can also create something kind of from scratch. And I'm going to be kind of working it out that way so that um, I'm going to teach these different skills or these different tags, like there'll be little tools in your toolkit. And you can use different, um, different uh, tags as needed. So what we're ultimately going to do is we're going to create a website, basically, which is for, in this case, four interconnected web pages um, that link between each other. And um, we're also going to have a few other cool things. Like, for example, today we'll be looking at, um, you know, things we didn't cover last week uh, that we'll be kind of talking about today are, you know, like the body tag and some things you can do with the body tag to make changes to text color or background color. Um, we'll use a couple new tags like the center tag, which is cool because it centers things on a page. We'll look at different heading styles. We'll change the color of text. We'll look at how to make a bulleted list or a numbered list. We'll learn how to make links. We will learn how to change the background color of our page. Um, change the default text color and um, we'll do links like I say and then we'll also um, kind of today we'll finalize with um, you know learning how to put an image into our in, on our page and have that show up fair enough good deal so when we're creating a web page or a website it's important that you are organized about what you're doing because HTML language allows you to work in several different types of media files and put those all together kind of in one place. And what I mean by that is that, for example, if I'm gonna have a web page and it's gonna have three graphics on it, each one of those graphics is gonna be its own graphic file. And then my web page itself, the HTML code is gonna be another file. So that's like, um, three graphic files and one HTML file. So that's four files that come together to make one page. And so staying organized and on top of that is going to be important. So before I get started with this project, and this is something I definitely recommend to, um, to those of you that are online and watching um, or watching later, that what we're going to do first is we are going to create a folder that's going to contain all of our documents that are going to be part of this web page. So our graphics, our HTML files are going to go in there. Our graphics files are going to go in there. The different pages that we make are going to go in there. And so the first thing is I'm going to go ahead and create a folder. And I'm going to do that by, um, in Windows, I'm going to go to my file explorer. And I have a flash drive, which I've named flash drive here. So I'm going to double click on my flash drive. Okay. 
And here is, it says um, this PC flash drive, which is happens to be L on my computer. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say new and choose folder, okay? And I'm gonna call this my web site, okay? Now all of the files that I'm gonna be creating are gonna go into the my website folder. It works out great because it keeps everything in one place. And so I want you to go ahead and create a folder. And then I want you to put everything that we're going to make as far as this web page or website goes into that folder. Okay. All right. Let's, now that we've created the, your, um, your website folder, um, we'll go back to the instructions. And the first thing when I'm going to create a, um, HTML document is I need um, my text editor. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Notepad++. And again, if you're on the Mac, you're probably use Text Wrangler or BB Edit or one of those. Um, for me today, I'm just going to go ahead and go to my start area and type Notepad. And Notepad++ kind of shows up right here. I'm going to click on it. Now, if you don't have Notepad++, um, you can download it and I um, left instructions on the last video about how to do that. So you can check that out there. So I'm going to say file new. And so we're going to start fresh. So here is my fresh document. Now, before I do anything, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up. I'm going to save it. Right. So I say file and I'm going to choose save as. Okay. Now save as asks you three things. Okay. It says, where do you want to put it? what do you want to call it? And then what type of file do you want to save it as? Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to find out where I'm going to put it. And I remember that it's on my flash drive that's called flash drive and it's in my folder that's called my website. So I'm going to click on that here. So that looks like it's right where I want to be. Now, what do I want to call it? Now the default first name or the, the default file name of your first page is index. Okay. Now that doesn't mean your page um, that you're making is going to be about indexes or um, indices. Um, it's just called index because it tells the web server that's your default first page. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to have you right here where it says file name. We're going to say index. I N D E X. Now, if I hit save right now, which I don't do that, um, it would save it as a text file. And that's not what we want because we want to save it as an HTML file. Okay. So I type index here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say where it says save as type. I'll pull the list down and it gives me a lot of choices, like almost too many, but I can see down here where it says hypertext markup language. So I click on that. So it says index.html, it says save as type, hypertext markup language, it's in the right place. And so then I'm gonna click on save, okay? Now, so I can tell it's in the right place because it says L, um, which is the name of my flash drive. It's in the my website folder and it's called index.html, okay? Here's another way I can check. I can go to my file browser. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my flash drive here. I'll click on that. And if I go to my website, I should see that my index file is in here. So index.html, it's right here. Okay. So good. We are so far cooking with gas. This is great. All right. So I'll close this for now and put that out of the way. Okay back in my text editor here. So the tags that we start an HTML document with are the HTML tags. So I'm going to go ahead and start my HTML. So I start my angle bracket. I say HTML. And then I'm going to, right after that, I'm going to close my HTML. And that is going to close my document. Now, everything that is going to be a part of this page is going to go between these two tags. Okay. So 
Um, that's what we call nesting, and we talked about that last week. Um, you can refresh um, watching the video from last week. Um, but from here, the next tag that we're going to use, um, and well, can one of you tell me what the next tag I'm going to put in there is? Somebody online? Uh, could you put head? I would put head. Yeah, my head or my heading area, right? So the head tag, right? So I'm going to now. I'm going to just tab a space over. Just, just uh, it doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't mean anything to the code at all. But just so that you can, we can read it easier. I'll say head, and then I'm going to end my head tag slash head. Now, the head tag contains things, um, what we call meta tags. And when you talk about meta anything, it's information about information, okay? So the meta tags for your document are gonna go inside of your head tags. To, to make that sound a little bit more clear, what is a meta tag? Well, it's something like a title, a description, it could be keywords. And there's other types of information that might go into uh, meta tags, like if we have something called a meta refresh and a couple other things like that. For today, what we're going to use uh, in our head tag is we're going to put a title in here. Okay, so let's do that. I'm going to say, okay, head. I'm going to and I'm going to put my title tag in here. Title, LT, and then. I'm going to close the title just because I'm just get used to um, once I open the tag, I would like to, you know, have the closing tag to go along with it. T I T L E. Great. So here we are with that. Now, what's the title of my page going to be? We're going to say um, Dr. Scott. Awesome. Website. Okay, and then that will be the title. Okay, and sometimes you'll see the title kind of like this. Um, if this works easier for you, where you have it kind of all written out this way, the spacing really does. It doesn't matter at all. I'm just kind of doing this so that you can see it better. Again, the nesting idea. Um, on the outside, these tags are the HTML opening and the HTML close tag. Everything is in between those two tags. They call that nested. Now, also nested between these two tags are the head tags, okay? And then nested between the head tags are the title tags, okay? Now, I've included an HTML cheat sheet that you can use to add other functionality. Um, if you wanted to add other, you know, like a keywords or a description, you can figure out how to do that through the HTML cheat sheet. Um, but for today, I think we're just going to go with the title and um, in our head, and I think that will be fine. So let me go ahead and save it. Okay, let's see. save it. Now I'm going to preview it in the browser. So this is the part where we have, you know, we're working on two different programs at a time. So I'm going to move this kind of over to the side a little bit, and I'm going to move this over to the side a little bit, and I'll get both of these kind of working on the same page here. Okay. And one of the tricks you might want to know is like if you take your window and you drag it th like you're going to drag it through the side and let it go, it kind of parks it like halfway between, which is kind of a cool trick. I'll take this and like again, you take this browser, I'm going to drag it through the other side and it kind of, so on one side I have my code, on the other side I have my browser, and that's kind of cool. You can do, you can work it with it that way. That's pretty easy to do. So what I'll do is I'm just going to open up another tab. And right now it's just a blank tab. And I want to preview what I'm doing here in my browser. So how do we do this? Well, I go to file and you know where the stuff is, right? It's on my flash drive. So let's say open file and let's find the flash drive. Well, it's already there, but let's just say we had to find it from scratch, okay? So let's see, let's go from this PC here. All right, so I'm gonna find my flash drive, which is here, okay? And then I'm gonna find the folder on my flash drive, which is my website. And then hopefully my index page is in there, which it is, and so I double click on that. And it opens up my index page and I see a whole bunch of nothing, 
right? Which is to be expected because um, we haven't put anything in the body tag and body is where the stuff that on the page is gonna show up, okay? So one of the questions in lab 7.5 is what, um, what do you see when you, um, when you have the things in the head tag or what do you see, you know, what displays when you are working with stuff in the head tags? Well, actually when you're heading tags, nothing displays on the page itself, but what we can, what we can see though, is we're using this title tag. And so you can see up here on the tab up here, the browser test says Dr. Scott's awesome website. See, I did that, you know, it's by using the title feature. Okay, cool. Simple enough. Now let's go back to our code. So I just kind of step back over to here and next tag I'm going to use is the body tag. Okay. So let's do that. So let's skip down and I'm going to type in body. And just like I'm used to, I'm going to go ahead and create my close of body tag as well. So close body and now I'm going to be talking about adding some functionality to the body tag in just a moment, but for now, just leave body and close a body just, you know, kind of right in there. Now, everything that's going to go on this area of the page, this real estate right here needs to go between the body tags. All right. So got that there. So let's play with some more text, shall we? We'll get to making um, the text colors and the background colors in just a moment. Um, but first, let's figure out what heading styles are. So, for example, I can use something called H1. And this means header, heading style one, and this is a text formatting style. And so I'm going to say this is heading H-E-A-D-I-N-G one um, style. And then oh, I'm going to close, oops, not D style, it's S style, let's style. Okay, great. And then I need to stop my H1 tag or turn it off. So H1, and I turn that off. All right. So this is heading one style. So I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to go over to my browser. Now, now that I have it loaded in here, all I have to do is actually, if I click refresh or click up in here and hit enter, we can see that our change that we made, hey, check it out. Hey, this is heading one style. Wow, well, if that's one, what does two look like? Do you think it's bigger or smaller or what? Well, I know the answer, but I'm not gonna give it to you. So let's let's experiment. Let's do this. We hit enter and save it as B. And so we're gonna make these H1s. So I just kind of copied and pasted this. And we're gonna make this two. We'll make this heading two style, okay? And we'll make this a two. And then we're gonna save it, save, and refresh it here. Boom, so now we can see heading two style. Hey, it got a little smaller, okay? Well, let's see if that happens again. Let's make a heading three, okay? I think they go to about six or seven, so um, not that I feel like we need to do everything, uh, every single one of those, but now you know how to make heading styles in HTML. So, oops, let me make this an H3, and we'll say heading three style, okay, three, and we'll say H3, and for that sake of just fun, I'm, instead of going to preview again, I'm just going to go, let's do, let's do a four, and let's say, start this, yeah, I didn't copy the whole thing, let's see, H, and then we'll make this three or four, okay. And we'll make this three, four, and we'll make this three, eight, four. And then we'll save it and we'll see what happens. So save. And if I refresh it here, boom. So you see that we can change bigness of text. Pretty cool. So that's another tool for your um for your palette. Okay, so we can we can do that. Now, if we wanted to create just regular text, we learned a tag last week called the paragraph tag which looks like this P it's just the P tag. And I'm just going to type this is default text. 
this is default tags. If I can end my slash p, we'll end the paragraph tag, and let's see what happens here. So let's save it. And if you just want to make regular style text, this is our default text right here. Pretty cool. So now we know how to put different text styles on here. We can put regular default text, and we can also make heading styles. That's pretty cool. Um, the next thing we're going to do is, um, let me look at the instructions and see where we are going next. Because I think we might do a list and we'll do that. Let's see. Uh, oh, with the center tag. Okay, we'll get there. Uh, okay, let's make a list. Let's do that. That'll be fun. Okay. So let me step back into my code. Let's see. You get window management is is something that we need to we'll get control of here so um let's make a list of our favorite you know i'm just going to be generic and kind of keep it similar to what we were talking about earlier and we're just going to make it our favorite foods so if we're going to make a list the first thing we need to do for our list is we need to have some kind of a heading of our list so i'm just going to pick one of these heading styles like say h3 and i'm going to I'm just going to copy this, copy, and I'm going to put this, paste it here. And instead of this as heading three style, we're going to say um, my favorite foods. Now, um, what's interesting, um, when we start a list, we actually, um, for example, this the list is called my favorite foods. But the, the items in the list, um, the first thing we're going to have here is the heading. Um, and then we're going to make our list below that. So let me save it and just show you what I mean. So if I hit refresh, you see on this page that says my favorite foods. Now let's make our list. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do when we make a list is we're going to call a list. And so what we're going to do is, in this case, we're going to make an unordered list. So I'm going to go UL, which is unordered list. And then I'm going to close UL. UL. Now, this in and of itself is it sets up a list. But as you'll see, it's not going to really look like anything. You can't, you can't see any changes that I made. What we need to do is we need to include list items and list items go between the UL tags. Okay, so here's where our stuff goes. So tab over a little bit. L I, that's an I, not a one. And so what are our favorite foods? Well, we'll just be generic and we'll say pizza, right? Who doesn't like pizza? Now, um, the li tag, um, you can use a closing tag, but usually you don't, I don't close li tags. Um, Usually you, you just kind of leave it as an LI list item. So next, another list item, LI, um, ice cream. Okay, another list item. Let's say we like, well, I'm just making this look just like the old one. Let's say sushi, right? Okay, and I love that stuff. Um, boy, COVID, I, I miss going out to sushi and stuff, man. That was that. That was fun times. Let's hit save and see what it, we're looking like so far. When I hit refresh. So pizza, oh, <laughs> spelling, right? Okay, pizza, ice cream, sushi. So now I can fix pizza, P-I-Z-Z-A, instead of P-I-Z-A-A, -A. okay, pizza. Okay, ice cream, sushi. Um, you know, this time of year, I like soup. I'm a soup eater boy. Um, pumpkin soup. Um, amazing um chipino um stews all that kind of stuff i love that so i'm just gonna say soup you know with bread and butter and all oh, so good okay so, so soup we'll add that um what's another thing that we like um hamburgers why not or veggie burgers or however you like to do that whatever your tastes are for that you know what i'm just going to be gross and i'm just because I, I love it hot dogs i love hot dogs and it could be a veggie dog or whatever, but I love them. It's so good. Okay, so let's see. I, I am kind of persnickety about the hot dogs I eat, though. I like to eat like, um, you know, like Nathan's or Hebrew National or, you know, it's like something that's a little bit beyond ballpark, you know? Anyway, I'm just kind of like my hot dog. 
foods. Okay, so pizza, ice cream, sushi, uh, soup, hot dog. Uh-oh. What up with that? Soup and hot dog. What didn't it get? Let's take a look. Oh, I know what happened. This is a good example of an error that on my part. So does anybody see what I might have done wrong? Let's look at this soup hot dog. That's not quite right. The tag, I used a one instead of L-I, right? So I need to replace that one with an I. Uh-huh. So that's what we would call a syntax error. And um, one of the things you'll get better at is, um, in, with, you know, with languages like HTML, it can be kind of persnickety about the way that you type in things. If you don't type the code in um, or the tag in um, like it's supposed to be, um, then it's not gonna work. So let's see if this fixes our problem. Boom, and let's refresh it over here. Great, pizza, ice cream, sushi, soup, hot dog. Okay, cool. So that's kind of a neat situation. Let's take this unordered list and let's turn it into an ordered list, shall we? Um, so what's an ordered list? Well, an ordered list, um, an order, unordered list is bullet points. Like, you know, you see these pizza, ice cream, sushi, soup, hot dog. None of them are in particular order like um, most important necessarily when you're looking at an unordered list. But when we look at an ordered list, it becomes something different. So let's change our UL to an OL. This is just for order, ordered list. So I will change that to an O. And I will change this U to an O. And let's just see what happens. Let's save it. And when I refresh it here, you'll see that it changes. Now, see, first is pizza, and second is ice cream, and third is sushi, and four is soup, and five is hot dog. Get that? So that's an ordered list, okay? So we have unordered list and ordered list. So that's another cool tool that you can put into your, um, put into your arsenal, if you will. Um, let's show you another cool tag. We're gonna learn the HR tag. HR stands for horizontal rule. And it's kind of a nice delimiter for you know, areas of your page. And I'll show you what I mean by this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a nice line between this is default tag text and my favorite foods here. So I'm gonna go back up to my tag or, or my code up here. And I'm gonna say enter and I'm gonna type, let me go back one. So I'm gonna type HR. Yeah, I don't need to have closing tag for this one either. And just for the sake of, you know, kind of being able to see it more clearly, I'm going to skip a line. It doesn't matter if you skip lines, you can not skip all day and it will still work. HR. Okay, so I'll save it. Let's see what it does. Okay, refresh. Hey, cool, look, it made that little line. Oh, that's kind of cool. So that's what HR is, is the horizontal rule. So it's a delimiter between this area of a page and that area of a page. And then we can create another HR if we want to. Let's do it right after our list. We say, okay, uh, let me say HR. We do another one. Okay, um, let me back this up one, just to make it look better. Say save and refresh. See, there's our second HR. How cool is that? Right on. The next thing you think he's gonna start doing is telling you how to make the background of the page a certain color or the text a certain color. Oh yeah, why don't we do that? Okay, well, let's say we wanted to change the default color of the text on our page, okay? We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a look at the body tag again. And um, we're gonna look at the beginning of our body tag and we're gonna add a couple parameters to it. And body is one of these weird, um, um, tags where you can actually change um, and add parameters to it. And thank you for that, Don. I see that Dr. Scott, Scott. So I'll fix that too. So let's fix that. Uh, and um, you guys catch things that I, I kind of just space over. So thank you for that. Um, Dr. Scott's awesome website. Okay, so um, body tag. So let's do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say text and we're gonna say gets, and let's choose a color for our text like um, purple. 
Okay, and we'll say text is purple. And let's see what this looks like. I'll save it. And when I refresh it here, let's take a look what happens. Check it out. Our text turned into purple text. Whoa, isn't that cool? So does that mean I could change it to like say red? Well, let's do it. Let's see if red works. Okay. Now I'm going to show you even more colors than just the ones you can name. Um, and it does know about 16, maybe 20 colors that you might name. Um, and the, you, chances are it'll, it'll work. Just, you know, kind of play with it. But I'm going to actually show you how to, next week we'll look at referencing colors by number, where we're going to use the hexadecimal address for our colors. So let's see, body text is red now. So let's say save it, save, and if I refresh it over here, change the text to red. See, that's kind of neat. Now, um, since we're changing the default text color, let me show you how to change the background color. So let's do that. Um, so body text gets red, and we're going to say for background, we're going to say background. Gets, and I don't know, let's say black. Let's see if this works. Let's say save it. Okay. And then. Uh-huh, somehow that didn't work right. Okay, let's take a look at what we got going on here. So body text gets red. Ah, because it's not background, it's actually BG color, okay? And how do I know that? Well, I, I know that because I've done a million web pages, but um, if you look at the text snippet that I gave you, it also shows BG color um, and also the HTML cheat sheet that I'm gonna do what have you use. So BG color. And BG color stands for background color. And so let's go ahead and save it and refresh. Boom, hey, now we're talking, okay. So that's kind of neat. Oh, it kind of reminds me, maybe I can make this look more like, let's go like, let's change this to this. You know, some fun the colors of your text. Um, I'm gonna go green text. We'll make this look a little more like the matrix or something now, let's see. And then I'll refresh over here and see if I get green text against black. Hey, there you go. Okay, cool beans. So I got green text, I got a black background, I got a couple of horizontal rules, I got a list. Um, wow, we should do a link. Why don't we do a link? Uh, I got just a couple more things to show you and we're almost done. And I know I'm keeping you a little longer than usual, but um, um, I think it's worth it. And um, if you have to go, you have to go. You can watch the video later, but I prefer you stay. And um, let's learn how to do a link. All right. So next thing, I would like to put a link below my list, right underneath this um, horizontal rule. And so I'm going to go to where that is on the code, and I'm going to click or click over here, and I'm going to say, okay. Now, here's how links work. A link we refer to as an anchor tag. We use an anchor tag, and an anchor tag looks like this. A for anchor, space, H ref, which means hypertext reference link. And we're going to say A H ref gets, okay, and then we're going to type the name of the place that we're trying to go to. So why don't we do something like this? A H ref gets, and then we'll say, I'll type something I know, like HTTPS colon slash slash www.santarosa dot edu okay now I'm gonna go ahead and save this and show you what it looks like which is exactly what I expected to see nothing because ahrep just talks about where the link is going to go we actually have to give it some text now to show up as the link so, um, and what do I mean by that? Well, you'll see what I mean. Um, I'm just going to type SRJC. This is the text that's going to show up in the underline that makes the link. Okay. Um, and so, and then I have to end it with this slash A. Okay. Now let's see how this works. Let's save it. And when I preview it over here, refresh. 
So it says SRJC. Now, if I click on it, let's see what happens. Hey, wow, it totally works, right? Right on. That's got a goal. We made a link. Hey, that's pretty slick. Okay, so I'll click back. Now, does anybody want to tell me why it's purple instead of blue? Because usually when links show up, it's blue, right? Unless you've already been to the place. Yes. If you've already been to a place, then the link is going to show up as purple. So these are um, a couple things that I just kind of want to give you a heads up about. So for example, if your text is black and you have a black background, you're not going to be able to see your text against the black background. It's a contrast thing, okay? It's things to think about. Um, if you have a blue background and your links are blue, then when you have a link, it's not going to show up properly. So think about blue backgrounds and, and, and um, Maybe if you're not going to change your link color, stick, stay away from blue backgrounds, at least for now. Okay. Um, let's add another link. All right. So this time we'll go ahead and I'm just going to copy this so we don't have to rewrite all of it. And I'll you know, copy it. And instead of the JC this time, let's go to HTTPS www.facebook.com. Uh, Why not? Dot com. And let's see where that goes. I have to change my text to something that's going to say Facebook. Otherwise, it would just say SRJC and go to Facebook, and that would be wrong. Now, that's not a syntax error. That's an error of intention. Okay, different different type of error, but an error nonetheless. Let's see. Save it and refresh over here. Now, SRJC and Facebook. How cool is that? Now, notice it puts it in the same line, even though I put it on a different line here, because it, it doesn't matter how you have, you know, the spacing or anything here. What does matter is um, what goes on between the tags. Okay. We'll play around with some more of that and you'll get a feel for it. Um, let's go ahead and add another link. Okay. It copy this one and we'll make this one go to YouTube. Okay. We'll paste this here and bring opening tag of ahref is now in this we're gonna go to YouTube. Y O U T U B E uh, dot com and for this one it's gonna say YouTube. Okay, I'll save it. And again, my guess is going to be put into the same row, um, even though we have it, you know, written this way in, the, in our code, we didn't address any uh, putting it on a different line. Now, what if we did want to put it on a different line? Remember last week, we learned a, cool, a tag called the break tag. So we can insert that here. We'll say tab and we're going to say BR is break and that gives you a line break here. Let me show you what I mean. Save it. And if I click refresh, now Facebook is on that next line. Okay, so we'll use another break tag. Tab and we'll use a break tag here, BR. Break. And we'll save it. And all right. So now. We've got our links going on, um, SRGC, Facebook, YouTube. Um, let's check and make sure that they work. I click on YouTube. Okay, does it go to YouTube? It looks like that's working. Let's try the Facebook link. So click on Facebook. Does that go to Facebook? And it looks like it's trying. Yay, it did go to Facebook. How cool is that? Hey man, I'm digging it. So I wanna get back to my other page that I was just on. So I don't know why it's not gonna let me do that. So no biggie. I will just say file, open, file, and my open my index again. And I can see that I have everything just back to where I was uh, before. Now, let's do one more thing and I'm gonna let you go. And this will kind of cover most of the basics. And then tune in next week because we're gonna show you how to make separate pages and link those and create a, um, a menu and and some cool stuff as well. So let's add a graphic to our page. All right, so now the graphics are put onto your page with a tag called, that's um, the image tag. 
So I'm going to start my graphic. The first thing I need to do is I need to find a graphic that I want to use. So let's go to Google and go to Google Image Search. And let's go click here. And I'm going to look at Google and I'm just going to type in the word Ferrari. F E R A R R I as in Ferrari. Yes, enter. And now it's going to give me everything Ferrari. But what I want to do is I want to click on images. Now, just as a FYI, everything on the web is considered copywritten um, unless it's under a Creative Commons license um, or it is that it's knowingly um, available for free use, um, on, you know, and, and not under copyright law. Now, if you are going to use a, for example, in, be, in our projects here, because we're not going to be posting it online publicly, I'm going to be a little bit more loose about, you know, you using outside imagery and so forth um, for your projects. However, when you put things up on the web, you know, uh, for public consumption, um, you can't like steal images. And if you do borrow an image that you need to create a link back to that, um, back to the source or get permission to use the um, imagery. Um, it's a better idea to, you know, create your own images, uh, you know, and I can show you a little bit about that next time. Um, but just for the sake of um, demonstration, we're going to kind of just pick up one of these cool Ferraris and I'm going to use that as a background image. So um, I'm going to scroll down my page here and I know that this is not, this is copywritten. So I'm not going to be posting this publicly, but I just want a really cool picture of a car just to kind of tie this all together. And I think this will work. Okay. If I click on this car, um, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say save image as. So I click on save image as. Now, where do I want to save that image? I need to save that image into my website folder that I created. So I'm going to go to my PC and I'm going to go to my flash drive, which is called flash drive here. And I go to the my website folder. Now, what do I want to save it as? I'm going to give it a real simple name just because it makes it so much easier. I'm just going to call it car. And it's a JPEG file, so I hit save. Okay. So now I have this image that's with my other documents. Remember, we're putting all of our stuff in the same folder. Okay, let's look at our page now the way it is. What I would like to do is bring that image into um, this area right here below YouTube. Okay. So let's learn the image uh, tag. We're going to Let's see, let me include a break first of all. Let's, let's make sure it goes on to the next line instead of being on the same one. So I'll put a break tag in here. And then I'm gonna create an image tag. So the image tag looks like this, IMG. Okay, now we're gonna say source or SRC. So what's the source of the image that we're gonna use? Well, that is going to be equals now, we just saved the document. It's called car.jpg. So I'll be type C-A-R dot J-P-G. Okay, and that should work because car is in the same folder as this document, meaning it's relative to each other in the same place. So let's see if I save it and let's see if this shows up. Refresh. Hey, cool. Awesome, I love this. Okay, so my car shows up, great. Um, wonderful, now I'm gonna have you guys experiment with adding another image, um, putting breaks in between them or making the cars next to each other or just kind of playing with some ideas. One last tag I wanna show you and that's the center tag because if I wanted to say center this car on the page, um, I might do something like this. Now, anything that goes between the center tag is going to be centered. So um, let me just center the car for once, for one thing. Let's see. Let me create a tag called center. And I have to close my center tag. So I'm going to, everything that comes after the center tag is going to be centered. <clears throat> so I'm going to skip all, 
um, what, till after my car, and I'm going to close my center tag. Otherwise, everything else that will be on my page eventually would be centered, and I don't necessarily want that. So let's see if this works. Let's save it, and then I refresh it here. Hey, check it out. Now, you'll find that certain types of images work on the web. So GIFs, you know, .gif, .jpeg, those work. Um, dot uh, png works uh, but you're gonna have a tougher time if you're trying to like upload like a bmp file um, because it's just not supported on the web so i would stick with jpegs um, gifs so dot gif dot jpg dot png or pings you can use those as well so in the meantime have fun with that and you know kind of going on with this ferrari thing let me change my text back to red um, and, you know, I'll just make this just look a little bit cooler before I let you go and refresh it here. Boom. So I got the red, you know, not quite Ferrari red, but we'll get it there. Um, folks, listen, um, have a wonderful week. I really enjoyed working with you this week. Mm -hmm.